<laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the last Bibber webinar of 2020. Um, before we get into this evening's um, program, um, those of you who didn't notice on the um, um, uh, introduction slide, uh, we've got over 40 webinars organized for early next year, uh, up until the um, uh, end of April. Um, and they're in five different um, uh, uh, ability levels, really, including uh, non beekeepers. So we've got hopefully going to have two sessions for non beekeepers. So if in your local beekeeping association, uh, you've got people who've made inquiries, then um, uh, please let them know about this one. Um, all events will be on uh, beekeeping.events, uh, which is a new website which has been set up for um, all beekeeping events in, um, uh, in all the various uh, countries. Um, I think that's all um, uh, the introduction, apart from to uh, introduce Adam Tafelski, who was with us last week. Um, he's from Poland. Uh, Professor Adam Tafilski, and he is going to talk to us about the morphometric identification of honeybee uh, subspecies. Uh, over to you, please, Adam. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Roger, for the introduction. So I will try to show you my presentation. I hope you will see the uh, first slide. So uh, last week I was talking about the subspecies and uh, I have mentioned that... Hi, Adam. Sorry, we can't see the slides just yet. Okay, sorry. Yes, I know. That's my fault. I need to share my screen. Thank you, that's perfect. Okay, so I hope now it's visible. Uh, sorry for the technical problem. So um, I uh, and it's um, much easier to measure body parts than behavior. From beekeeper's point of view, it would be much more important to determine like defensiveness or honey production, but it's much more difficult because, for example, defensiveness can change from day to day, and it depends if the colony was inspected or not. With measurements, it's much easier because when a honeybee worker or queen emerges from the cell, her development is finished, it will not grow. So the measurements can be very precise. And um, I mentioned also last week that the, there are many differences in morphology between subspecies, but the differences are small and usually you need um, to make measurements to identify the subspecies precisely. Some people can have um, experience and can like look at the bees and they know, oh, this is native, this is not, but um, usually most beekeepers don't really are able to do this and uh, to be sure, you have to make measurements. And one of the measurements which is uh, used by beekeepers since long time is cubital index. And it's a proportion of two vein lengths. You see here a part of the wing. And here is one of the old publications by Goetze. And you can see that it's not um, also clear how the cubital index was defined in all times, because it's either measured along the veins or along the section, which, um, which is not exactly as it's done today. Anyway, so the first time the cubital index was introduced by Aupatov, who was a Russian scientist. And this was like a um, percentage of vein length. And then in Germany, Goethe changed this to 
like fraction, and we now usually use this definition of Getze. And um, in case of Mellifera and Carnica, there is big difference in cubital index. So Mellifera has smaller value, much smaller than Carnica and probably Ligustica. And you can check my website and there are listed cubital indexes for wide range of subspecies. And you will notice that uh, there are um, many subspecies have the same cubital index. So cubital index is good for discrimination between Mellifera and Carnica, but can be, for example, not effective in discrimination between Mellifera and Iberiensis, which uh, is in Iberian Peninsula. So uh, I later, there were introduced angles by Dupro in 1965 and introduce many of them. And even later, Rutner used those angles, some of them and some other measurement, measurements, and he created like standard morphometry. And apart from wing measurements, which are angles and some distances, there are also many other measurements, including color of body parts, uh, length of proboscis, and the standard morphometry is very precise. However, it is very difficult to make large number of those measurements. And it's um, unlikely that beekeepers will be able to do all of this. So that's why in uh, recent times there was introduced geometric morphometrics, which I use. And it is based on landmarks, which you can say points. I use 19 of them, which you can see on this uh, picture. And uh, I will not go into details because um, it's quite complicated. Anyway, you can um, analyze the landmarks by translation, scaling, rotation, and then you can analyze them. The good uh, information is that beekeepers don't need to know all the details because it's enough if some software will calculate this for them. I compared the standard morphometry and geometric morphometrics, which is the method used by Rutner. And I showed that the discrimination using geometric morphometrics is better. When you compare the clouds of points, on the left one, there is big um, distance between the clouds of different colors. With standard morph morphometry, there's bigger overlap. However, this uh, is related only to wing measurements. When you do all the more than 30 measurements, including color and proboscis, then uh, I'm sure the standard morphometry would be much more precise. Anyway, it's so time consuming that it's unlikely that beekeepers will use it. So the wing measurements, uh, are uh, good because they can be done easily and precisely. Wing is two-dimensional, unlike, for example, head or tear guides. So uh, there are also clear veins and parts of the wings are transparent. So it's also easier to put the wing in standard position in such a way that it's uh, perpendicular to uh, optical axis of camera or scanner. So the wing measurements have many advantages, can be done quite quickly, can be automated to some degree. So I think that um, using wing measurements, the identification of subspecies is, is much faster. So in all the times there were used um, ocular micrometers. So they can be used only with microscopes you put this device in like eyepiece and inside the eyepiece there is kind of ruler and you can uh, put B on the microscope and read mm, the value, what's the length of, for example, vein or other body parts. There are also, um, in all the times they were used slide projectors. Some of you can remember them. So when you place a slide, 
here you can project it on a wall. Inside, uh, in, instead of a slide, you can put here honeybee wing, and then the wing is enlarged on the wall. And then on this enlarged image, you can use ruler or other device to measure uh, distances or angles. However, again, this is kind of history because nowadays most of them measurements are based off uh, dig digital images which are obtained using cameras or scanners. Then we get a file, the file is saved in computer, then it's open in the software. In the software, there are determined some landmarks and the coordinates can be used, can be converted to distances or angles using quite simple formulas. Or if you use geometric morphometrics, you use the uh, coordinates uh, directly. So uh, when you obtain the wing images, it's important to get good quality and to avoid some distortions. So it's important that the wing is flat because normally it's uh, not perfectly flat. And if you don't put it under glass, it can be twisted. And on the twisted uh, wing, the angles and the distances uh, will be different. And also, I think it's important to, uh, to use transmitted light, not reflected light. And also it's important to make the image perpendicular to the, the surface of the wing. So because if, if you take the image from the angle, the, the angles and the distances can change. The um, illumination, I think, is important. And I think much better is transmitted light. And this um, illustration should e explain you. So in the, here you, you see in the top camera, you see the wing between two pieces of glass and the light source is on another side of the wing. Because the parts of the wings are transparent, you get very good image when you use reflected light. So when the light source is on the same side on the wing as a camera, you can get reflections because the surface of the wing is uh, shiny and you have like white spots and not all the parts of the wing are clearly visible. So in this case, first of all, the wing is uh, twisted, which is not good. It was not covered with a piece of glass. And another problem is this reflected light. So for example, in this part, it's uh, the, the, the venation is not well visible. So I would encourage you to, to use always transmitted light, not reflected light. And um, you can make the good wing images using microscope or digital camera, but then uh, you need uh, to organize this uh, transmit light. However, with scanners, it's, uh, it's easier, and I think. And uh, you can avoid some problems. Some of them are optical aberrations. So when you use uh, like cheap lens, the lens can distort the image. And um, this can add some error. With scanners, there is no such a problem. Another good thing about scanners is good illumination, but only if you use a slide adapter, also called transparency adapter. I will try to explain this device in a minute. And also from the scanner, you get information how big is the wing or other body part because the scanner provides resolution usually it's like dpi dots per inch and it can be like 1400 so using this number you can convert pixels to millimeters so for example you will be able to know um, how big for example the wing is Scanners have also disadvantages because uh, they are much slower than uh, cameras. With camera, you have like fraction of second and you get image. 
but with uh, scanners usually it takes much much longer there is like a noise and you wait sometimes with high resolution can be even a minute before the image will go to the uh, computer and also most of the scanners have lower resolution than most camera most cameras nowadays because there is very fast uh, progress in technology and most of the digital cameras used nowadays uh, have like more than five megapixels and the um, resolution of the cameras are good. However, even if the resolution is good, if you don't have good lens, there can be high resolution, but also distortion. So that's why scanners are uh, are good uh, and I think beekeepers should concentrate on scanners. I also would like to um, explain the old technology with slide frames. So most slide frames were used for mount uh, diapositives which were used in traditional photography. You cut the film and put in a frame. Here you can see an expensive, more expensive frame with glass. So normally there was no glass, but more expensive uh, frames which were designed to protect the film from scratches or uh, getting um, fingerprints. So here there are two pieces of glass and the wings can be placed between them. So then we have kind of mounted wings. Here you have both front wings and hind wings, but normally we measure only the front wings and then you can also store them. And you, you have, if you have wings mounted this way, you can use photographic scanner. Here is a Nikon. However, together with the um, traditional photography, also the scanners are quite rare nowadays because most people use digital photography. And for example, this scanner is not produced any longer and you can buy only second hand. And advantage of this scanner is good quality, good resolution. However, the disadvantage is um, high price and also it's also quite slow. That's why I think that for beekeepers, it's much better to use inexpensive office scanner but the scanner needs to have slide adapter. So this is one of such scanners, which I believe is uh, cheap and it can be used not only for morphometry, but also for your office use. If you need to sign some document and send it over email, you can use this device as well. So if you open uh, the scanner, you can see the area where you can place a piece of paper. However, for wing measurements, in this place, you put a piece of plastic with a space where will be the uh, slide uh, adapter. In this space, you can place a wing or for example, even 10 wings. And then you should cover the wings with piece of glass. It can be microscopic slide. So then the wings are lying on the glass and are covered with the glass. And then they, yeah, they are flat and the image should be good. Then when you prepare the wings here, you can cover with slide adapter, which looks like this. It's basically a light source. And this light adapter provides transmitted light. Without this adapter, normally scanners, you've reflected light. So, mm, and when you prepare the scanner this way, you only need to, uh, in options, choose that you scan slides or diapositives and you, you should use maximum uh, uh, resolution, but optical resolution, not interpolated. In case of this scanner, the maximum resolution is, as I remember, 4,800, and which is, good enough. Here we can uh, images obtained with photographic scanner in upper part and you see 
more details, you see hairs on the wing. The lower image is from the cheaper scanner, which you have seen before. It's not so good, but it's good enough because the veins are clearly visible and they can be used for measurements. So when you try to measure the, or identify uh, what is the subspecies of a colony, you should not use single wing. You should measure at least 10 of them. It would be even better if you use like 20. So it should be between 10 and 20. The more wings you measure, the more precise will be the measurements. And for, for my software, it should be like one wing per image. And on the image, you indicate position of the 19 landmarks. And the location should be precise because if you don't do this carefully, the results will be imprecise. It's uh, some computer scientists say junk in, junk out. If you don't place the points correctly, the identification will be not precise. And in order to make the location um, precise, uh, it should be well um, described. So on the picture here, you see that each of the 19 landmarks have like a blue circle. And I suggest that the blue circle should touch the edge of the venation in three points. For example, in case of those two big ones. So this blue circle is tangent, which means touches the edge in one, two, three points. Another one, two, three points. The same with, is with the smaller um, landmarks, smaller variants. So this uh, image is uh, very important for correct location of the points. And you should pay particular attention to the point 19, uh, 14, because some people place it across only this uh, narrower vein. And, I, and in all the times, I also did it, but I decided that it should be here because Rutner used this location. And because lots of data, historical data of Rutner are published, I decided um, to use this location, which is consistent with uh, historical ones. OK. So uh, the software which I use, you can download freely from my website. Uh, but also before, I should explain, explain that you should use uh, a proper uh, classification. So in the software, you, you will use set classification. And in case of UK, you should use Apis, Mellifera, Lineages classification. There's also subspecies, but in case of United Kingdom or Mellifera in general, you should use this lineages because um, in case of subspecies, the interpretation of results will be more difficult. So uh, interpretation of the results, it's not so easy because um, the subspecies produce hybrids. So it's uh, in many cases, it's not so easy to say if the colony is one subspecies or another. In some cases, it should be concluded that it's hybrid. So it's, um, you should pay attention to how similar your colony is to many subspecies. And usually, it's assumed that the subspecies with the highest similarity is um, the subspecies which you will classify as. In some cases, with my software, you will get zero probability. And uh, this is when the orientation of wings is incorrect. And also when two landmarks are swapped or when you don't place it correctly. But I will try to explain, explain this in, uh, uh, in my software. So to download the software, you can use this address, internet address, and then there is uh, just a, a zip file 
I will try to show you this. So I hope you see my website. And this is the Identify web page. You should click on this. The recent version of Identify is 1.5. You should click this link and then the file should be uh, in uh, your downloads folder. And when you double click, you will unpack it. And if you copy this whole folder, I copied my directly to um, uh, drive C. And you can see here, so to run the software, just double click the identify. So here you can see hopefully the window and I will open one of the wing images which I have uh, uh, saved before. You can see the image, the wing and also the landmarks, but in order to uh, present how the measurements should be done, I will remove them. In the recent version, you can see different zo zoom options. One of them is like fit to window uh, or zoom to actual size. And in, th in this case, first I will remove all of the landmarks. I have marked them and use delete. I have removed. So now there is no uh, landmark, no landmarks at all. It's always better to have bigger magnification. You can use this zoom. To add uh, the landmarks manually, you should use this mode, like add mode. And then um, you see the cross. And with the cross, you click first point, second, and third. And like this, you can use all 19. But also, I would like to show that it can be done quicker. So to do this, I will do landmarks, reset. When I do reset, there will be shown all the 19 landmarks, but not in the right place. Now I have like a cross, I need to change to edit. So I use, I will choose the select mode. And now I will move most of the landmarks to the white background. I, I'm marking most of them and just dragging outside. Only four of them are left. So I will, each of the four, I will place in a correct position, which is here. And when they are more or less in the right position, you can use landmarks and fit. And then you see that all the landmark jumped more or less in good place. So this will work with good image quality. If you use transparent tape or image is dirty or very low resolution, there can be problem. And then you can, you, it's possible that you will have to place the points manually. Anyway, even if it's done automatically, you should check the points. And for this, uh, in the new version, you can see that I have like two zooms, three and four. When I use zoom free, the wing is uh, enlarged in such a way that the circle around the landmark fits very well to the venation. So now I will correct precisely each of the points. So one second and so on. Three is okay. In case of four, I need a big correction. So it's um, automatic, but uh, you need to make some small corrections. It's good to use this like a drag mode because then you can drag image and the landmarks. I will try to quickly correct the points. It's more or less okay. Now I'm correcting only the uh, landmarks which are on a 
not so broad banks. For those landmarks, it's better to use another zoom. For, so now you can see that again, the circle touches the venation in three points, which is okay. In order to uh, adjust the zoom to your image size, you can do this file and preferences. Here you can change zoom and then use current zoom for three, use current zoom for four. In this way, you can um, the zoom work for, for your um, images. So at this point, we have all the landmarks. And um, now I will set classification Apis mellifera lineage classification, which I have mentioned is good for UK for mellifera mellifera subspecies. So now you don't see change, but now I will classify. When I use classify, there will be classified only one wing. And in this case, the results uh, is, uh, I'm not sure if you um, see the, because in my case, it's hidden behind the um, images. In this case, you see that this single wing was classified as lineage C, but with low probability, because this means E minus zero six, means five zeros and two. This is a really small number, okay? Another subspecies are even smaller because minus 17 means 1601, okay? So all of them are small numbers. You don't see any dot because it's so far away, it's outside of the image. So using single wing, the result is, uh, strange, okay? So as I told you, it's always better to use whole directory. In my case, you can place the points for directory using open directory. Oh, I will save the points. Yes, I would like to save. And then I choose this folder, select folder. When you open folder using control arrow, right and left, you can see, so now I'm, uh, looking forth and back of 10 images which are in this directory. The landmarks are already correctly placed. So this is already to show you that uh, I have those 10 images and then I use classification, classify directory and I indicate. So in my case, it's colony HR 801 and select folder. And again, I have results, but in this case, not based on one wing, but based on uh, 10 wings from my folder, which is uh, described here. Again, we have classified as lineage C or most, most similar classes lineage C. And this probability, which is similarity is much higher because in Earlier case, it was minus six. It means it was many zeros here. When you, um, it's also important not only look on the most similar, but also on the other. So lineage A, minus 17, very small number. C, again, is the same, large number. M, small number, and O, small number. In this case, we have clear situation that this colony, belongs to pro most probably the lineage C. And it's right because this colony is from Croatia. And in Croatia, there are some imported colonies, but majority of the beekeepers keep Karnika and Karnika is from lineage C. And you can see also on the graph that the black point is a little bit outside of the ellipse for the lineage C. But uh, you also uh, need to realize that this reference sample about which I will talk soon was based on uh, bees mainly from Austria and uh, only few colonies were from uh, former Yugoslavia and Croatia. And also uh, 
what you can see from this graph, that this point, which indicates the colony, is far away from all other lineages. So this makes uh, very unlikely that they belong to any of them and that there are hybrids. In case of um, bees from England, they, most colonies would be probably in this area. Most, so the more native would be inside the um, ellipse here, but some of them would be much closer to lineage C or even in this direction if there are like backfast or similar. So if the point is intermediate between them, this would suggest it's more similar to others. In this case, it's on the other side. In, so in this case, it's uh, safe and it's easier to conclude that this is Carnica. Also, you see that when you use 10 images, you have completely different results than using single wing. You can do the same with each of the 10 wings and every time there would be quite big differences, but the most important result is average from whole colony from 10 images. So I will close this and I will show you some situation um, when the probabilities are all zero. For example, when uh, the wings uh, in my software should be in this orientation. So for example, if you, uh, if I flip the image this way, so all the points seems to be in right place, okay? But this is not good position. If I now classify this single image, you see that you have zeros, okay? All zeros, it means that it's not similar to any honeybee, to any subspecies. So if you have image this way, you can easily flip it horizontally and vertically. So rotation is not important. The image can be like at different angles, but the orientation is important. In some cases, it can happen that you don't do it properly. And for example, when you place the five or in some strange place, which is clearly incorrect. In this case also, you will get zero probability, no similarity to anything. When I put it back, but sometimes it, it can be more complicated because you will just swap the po two points, okay? So one is here, I have swapped them. And in this case, I will save this and uh, Again, classify, also probabilities are zero, but when you look at the points, it's much difficult, much more difficult to detect such a problem. And to, to find for errors in position of the landmarks, you can use landmark outliers. And then you choose the colonies because the outliers only work for more images, preferably more than 10. So when you select the folder, you can see yellow lines, which indicate how much the landmarks differ from average. So if everything is okay, you will have very short yellow lines because each of the images will be a little, little bit different from average, but not much. But in this case, you have long lines so then you see that you need to uh, correct it right way and, uh, and save uh, once again. So when you have this uh, outliers, I will do it once again, outliers and select my colony. You see that now most of the um, yellow lines are very short, which is normal. So even if the line is longer, but you see that the point is placed correctly, you don't change it. You should use only as a cue. And when you use outliers, first image you see is the most different from average, but you can use control arrow to see the next one and the next one. But the next and next should be less problematic, should be more similar to average. 
So this is kind of few uh, problems which you can um, encounter with, with the identify software. And uh, now I, I will try to get back to um, uh, presentation. I need to find the slides. Okay, so we have finished here. So I show you in practical way how to use the identify. So even if you don't use, um, so I think this uh, identification based on all 19 points is much more precise than based on cubital index only and cubital index and discoidal shift, which is another index used historically because there is much more data. You have data from 19 points. Each point is described by two numbers, which is lots of information. So one of the problem with the identification using the landmarks, but also the cubital index is reference sample. So uh, the identification uh, first depends how precisely we will place the points, but also how good is the reference. And um, the reference is uh, the group of bees, the colonies, which are used as a example for each of the subspecies. So normally you need to measure lots of wings from many subspecies and then you have the references and to the reference is good when there are many colonies from whole range of the subspecies, not from single location. For example, if you use such a reference, uh, if you make such a reference for United Kingdom, you should make, um, you should use colonies both from Scotland and from England and Welsh, Wales. So the references sample which I use are from large number because like 25 subspecies, four lineages, and they were obtained from Oberulzel, from morphometric B data bank. So this is the place where uh, Rutner worked. And uh, I was able to get access to those thanks to Stefan Fuchs, who worked in uh, Oberuzel. So I used this, measured them, and now you can use Identify to use this as reference. It's not perfect reference because there is not enough, it would be much better if the number of colonies would be higher. You see the four lineages and the lineages are much better than subspecies because is each of the lineages is represented by like probably more than 100 uh, colonies. In case of subspecies, you can also choose subspecies in identify, but then you have lots of subspecies, but some of them like Rutneri, for example, is um, defined only by five colonies, which is definitely not enough. So you can use it, but it's much safer to use lineages, which is uh, based on better reference sample. What I did recently for Malta is uh, I prepared special reference sample for this small island. In this island, there are subspecies Apis mellifera rutneri, probably if I correct it, if I pronounce it correctly. So in this case, you have separate, separate ellipses for those lineages. Normally, uh, rutneri is uh, from lineage A, but here in A are all other lineages. So uh, I was able to collect much more than five colonies and using this uh, kind of reference sample, the identification is uh, much better. And the green points show that some proportion of the colonies from Malta are uh, still native. However, those should be considered as uh, hybrids. And using those uh, reference samples, 
beekeepers from Malta can select uh, which of the colonies are more native if they decide to, to protect their native uh, subspecies. Some people probably know that there are genetic me methods of identification of subspecies, and I'm not really expert of uh, molecular methods ba based on DNA, but I would like to mention quickly that some of them are based on mitochondrial DNA, and this method is quite good, but uh, it's not able to detect hybrids because mitochondrial, mitochondrial DNA is inherited only from mother. So if a um, queen, which is uh, with this mito type, with this DNA mated with uh, Carnica or Mellifera for non-native drones, you still will see that it's uh, native because her DNA, um, yeah, you can detect only mother's DNA. Microsatellites are much uh, better. They can be used to detect hybrids. But in this case, usually it's better if you have reference for all subspecies which you want to discriminate. And it's much more difficult to compare results between studies. And recently, there is single nucleotide polymorphism, SNP. And this is a very good method. but expensive and also you need very good quality of DNA. So there are still some problems uh, with those molecular methods. And uh, the most important that beekeepers will not be able to use them. But morphometry and identify software you can use. And I did, uh, I made comparison with Andre Alexa, how uh, good uh, identification uh, of uh, subspecies based on uh, morphometrics in, compar in comparison to microsatellites. And on this graph, you can see that there is high correlation. And, uh, and so this data show that uh, if you make precise measurements from more than 10 uh, workers from colony, preferably 20, then the results will be very similar to microsatellites to the molecular methods. The only difference is that to do it using morphometry, you need to measure lots of bees, more than 10 from a colony. But with microsatellites, you can use one or few individuals and those molecular methods work very well, even with like single even work. And I have also mentioned uh, one, uh, last week that you can also test uh, queen qu quality using measurements. And uh, so uh, in some cases, when uh, you produce lots of queens in single colony, like queen breeders do, some of the queens can be, can be underfed. And the queens don't develop into proper queens, but they are uh, intercasts. The intercasts are kind of intermediate bet between workers and queens. I, and I did the measurements of hundreds of queens, which I have received from one queen breeder who was measuring them. And if the small queens were disqualified, they were not sold. So I had both good quality queens and those intercasts and workers. And uh, you can see from this graph that they are quite well differentiated. So if you make wing measurements, you can, first of all, there's big difference between queens and workers, and also big difference between queens and intercasts. And the intercasts are not in case of wing between, but yeah, they are clearly different. So this is still unpublished. and. Um, you will not have this identification file in identify, but what you can do is a measure wing length. Um, and you should expect that good quality queen from Mellifera will have wing longer than 9.75. And 
I will try mm, to show you how to make such a measurements. First, I will open an uh, image with the honeybee queen wing. And in this uh, wing, I would like to measure the length. So I will place manually two landmarks, one here and one here according to the graph. So this is the proper um, way to measuring wing length. So the wing cannot be broken. You, the wing base needs to be visible. When I have the two uh, points, you can use landmarks, distance, and then you have data. Unfortunately, this is results in pixels, but you need in millimeters. To get the distance in millimeters, you need to provide information what's the resolution of the image. In this case, I use the scanner, which was like mm, photographic scanner, which was like 4000 DPI. So I need to, prov to provide information about this. And this is set resolution. And here in this window, I can enter this value. Unfortunately, this is not dots per inch, but in pixels per meter or uh, dots per meter. And you need to recalculate this uh, separately in Excel or in other software. Or in this case, I know that my resolution was 157 four eight zero so my resolution is 157,480 pixels per per millimeter if i provide this information and now click distance once again you see that the distance is 0 0.0099 in meters so it's 9.9 .9 millimeters so in this case this queen was of proper quality because the distance was longer than nine millimeters, which is uh, well above the thresholds, which uh, I have uh, suggested to you. So, uh, it, so this is uh, more or less uh, what uh, I have presented uh, for you and uh, I hope that if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. Okay, Adam, thank you very much indeed. Um, that was uh, that was probably, let's say, advanced level, I think, for, uh, for some people. I'm sure some of the listeners um, uh, haven't seen it before, but it's... Uh, it was a good program, so thank you very much indeed. Um, we've got um, about a dozen questions in so far. Some of them are um, uh, are a bit of a duplicate, but we go down. Um, Adam suggested 10 to 20 wings per colony, but doesn't the queen mate with more than this number of drones, so couldn't there be multiple races of bees within one colony? Uh, how do you account for this? Okay, so uh, you can't expect that you will sample all the drones because uh, so it's also, as I understand it, not about so much genetical differences, but environmental uh, influences. So when you make measurements, you will have some error. So first of all, you will not place the point in right place. And another problem, so this is first source of error. Another source of error is that different workers will be different because of food, temperature, environment. So I think those are the most important um, sources of uh, variation and error. And um, when you make average of 10 to 20, this, will, uh, this error will be smaller. So um, I encourage beekeepers to make, for example, 40 um, workers. And you see that when you measure above 20, the, res the results will be very similar. So when you go above 10, adding more bees will uh, 
not change the results very much. Obviously, the more workers better. However, if uh, I have, uh, if I can choose between measuring 60 workers from one colony or 10 workers from six colonies, I would choose 10 workers from six colonies because, you know, it's more effective. I think, meaning no disrespect, I think probably our bees are much more hybridized than, um, uh, than yours may be. I've certainly done um, 30 or even up to 50 wings per colony, and they have been all over the place. And I think probably what the questioner is asking really is, um, uh, if you take uh, 10 wings and you get a result, you may well take a, a, a 10 different wings and get a rather different result. And I suspect that's what the questioner is, is, is getting at. Okay, so, uh, so <laughs> I'm sure the more wings, the better. But for example, from my experience, uh, yeah, the, the results for, from single wings will be spread all over. But if you do, maybe 10 still will be different. But if you do 20 and 20, from my experience, the difference will be not so big. And uh, obviously it will be better to provide numbers and uh, you will see, um, yeah, so we can, uh, yeah. Um, another one on a very similar note, um, will different patchery lines in a colony have different wing venations? I'm sure, yes, uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, so, but to verify this, you need molecular studies. So you need to measure lots and lots of wings. And at the same time, each of the workers need to be checked uh, by molecular methods. And then you can do. I don't uh, know any, maybe there is. I, I, I know one in wasps. So in wasps, uh, they were able to uh, differentiate the pattern lines very well. And, but I did with colonies. So two different colonies. If you take lots of measurements, you can discriminate without problems two colonies. And with pattern lines, should be similar. But unfortunately, it's, it's not very useful and it's not easy to do because as I told you, you, need, you would need to measure each of the workers using DNA methods as well. Okay, um, three similar questions. Is the software Mac compatible? Not at the moment. So um, it can be, but I'm not a Mac user and uh, <laughs> it would be problem for me. So if I have Mac computer, I, I can compile it for Mac users because I don't have Mac computer and don't a lot of people use it anyway. So it's um, unlikely that this, there will be such a version for Mac, unless there will be some determined user who will provide me computer on which I will do this. Okay, you more or less touched on this. Um, what information can be gained by using the program on wings from a queen? Can it identify the queen, re, AMM, Carnega, etc.? So the problem is that uh, I'm sure that queens can be identified as well, but you need reference samples. So at the moment, <laughs> there is even a problem with reference samples for workers. For example, from United Kingdom, I have very few wings, okay? So for queens, it's even less data and it will be even more difficult to get them. So uh, definitely queen wings are clearly different from workers and from, from drones. So you can identify subspecies of queens and drones, but to do this, you need reference sample, big one, large one from each of the subspecies. And at the moment, I don't, I don't know anybody who has this kind of data. So that's why it's unlikely. And anyway, it's, uh, it's uh, difficult to get the wing images of live queen. It is possible you can, anesthetize queen a little bit and take queen image and it can be used, uh, sold or used in colony. But normally we 
killed workers to to make the measurements or use dead workers from you know from the bottom of the hive so i don't think it's practical and it will not happen very soon so at the moment we still have problems with workers reference samples it's not a question um but one for me um, a bit of a thought do left uh, wings and right wings vary very much in the same um, insect Yes, they differ. So for example, right wings are bigger than left one. And there are a little bit differences in wing shape. And I also did this year such a study to compare bees from different months. So if bees from May different from August. So there are differences. If you measure one colony in May, June, July, August, the results will be different a little bit, not much different, but different. And, uh, but they differ in unpredictable way. So you don't predict that in August is always closer to Mellifera, but in May closer to Mellif uh, Ligustica, wherever. So every month it's a little bit different and in unpredictable direction. In case of right and left wings, there are some small differences. And also uh, they are, as I remember, even smaller than those differences between months. So I use, um, for example, often both wings. But um, to be precise, it's it would be better to use only left. But also, also from uh, also, it's not always clear if the reference is always left. So you should use left wings if reference is from left wings. Okay, but this is not a big problem as I understand because the results will be quite similar. Uh, but there are differences. The differences through the month, is that likely to be um, a, a feeding issue? Probably, but not only feeding, but also temperature, although bees regulate, control the temperature, but I'm sure in um, early spring there will be a little bit colder, but also there, there is different um, uh, pollen, you know, different food. So it's different species of uh, plants, uh, different uh, workers. Uh, so, so I, there are many sources of variation and it's difficult to say, and I think it's probably impossible. So there's lots of research, but no, it's not easy to, to say what's, what's the reason why the wings are different. Um, do scans need to be in PNG format or can JPG or others be used? So at the moment I uh, use PNG and uh, the, my software will open JPEG, J, you know what I mean? And, but then the results will be saved only in PNG. And I think it's better and safer to use PNG because there is no loss of quality. When you use JPEG, there is some compression and this compression makes the uh, quality lower. With PNG, there is compression, but without loss of quality. That's why I decided to use PNG. Okay. Um, this one's been touched on with Queens, but can this technique be used to classify drones? Yes, it can be, but it's the same. We don't have references. So if somebody is uh, providing me large number of drones from Melifera, Ligustica, it's possible to do, and I'm sure there will be differences, but it's also not so easy to get drones. So it, it, it will be not happening in the near future. Uh, would you please explain again what you mean by an intercast? So intercast is a, a queen which is smaller uh, than normal queen and has some uh, intermediate uh, morphology. But it's, so there are some studies, so um, it's known, for example, that queens don't have corbicula for transport of pollen, workers have. Queens have different mandibles. They also, um, different shape of head. So in the intercasts, the mandibles, for example, will be different from workers, but also different from queens. So 
you can say it's like underfed queens. So they they are not workers, but they are not really queens. And it's uh, not uh, very well studied. There are only a few studies. Is that likely to be caused perhaps by um, breeders trying to raise too many uh, queens in one colony? So this is like unwanted effects. So like side effects. Um, yeah. So Queen breeders try to get as much money as possible to <laughs> produce lots of queens without effort and without cost. So they then place lots of queen cells and again and again and again. And at some point with the like third uh, batch, I, I, I also not breeder, but and some colonies can be also, there can be some problem with food. So normally it's, they should be fed. But uh, yes, so in Poland, there was a law about this size to exclude the intercast, the two small queens, but it's not uh, valid any longer. So queen breeders, they prefer no control because they can sell everything. So and I <laughs> think it's not only in Poland. I think it's the in UK and everywhere is the same, okay? Because it's a natural situation. And, uh, and it's like some trouble for breeder to, to check the size, the weight. So normally they should be placed on precise balance and verify weight. If the correct weight, sell. Not correct weight, should be disqualified. But it's uh, too much hassle for most of breeders. Right. Okay. Uh, this one I think we'll do last, if you don't mind, because I think it might help if you put your screen up again, because somebody's asked... How do you select point 19, which is a, um, a, 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 a question that I think a lot of people are answer. So if we're, 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 when we finish, if you put your screen up again, uh, we can do it then. It, unless you want well, to do it now. So I think we can uh, do this. Uh, okay, I'm fine with that. Yep, carry on. So I hope, uh, so now I will switch to um, worker wing. So the point 19, it's uh, in the middle of the vein. Uh, maybe it would be easiest to say as far away from the seven. So if you find in the middle of the vein, like most distant point. So if you have um, uh, some problems with this, you can always use view prototype. So classification view prototype, and you can see it's quite small, but with this window, when you use control up, control up, you can make it larger. And then you can scroll, you can see, so this is in prototype, how it was defined by me. So first of all, you can check on this prototype, which again is Classify view prototype, tak? yes. So it's, um, yeah, but from my perspective, so it's much more difficult to uh, determine the point seven and 14 because there are wild, wide uh, veins. So I suggest to make it smaller and then the circles sh should touch. But in this case, you should make it larger and the circle, again, even larger. So the circle touches the edges of the nation in the most distant point of this uh, marginal cell. I hope it's uh, clarified, at least partly. I think so. Thanks very much indeed. So that's that one. There are a couple of questions in about the groups AMOC. Well, they are the evolutionary uh, lineages, um, the four main ones. So we'll we'll get through them quickly. Um, can you measure queen wings length without killing the queen? So uh, in theory, it's possible because, for example, in particular, when you um, make artificial insemination. Because then you anesthetize queen when, with carbon dioxide. So for like a few minutes, the queen is motionless. And then 
you can place the wing to a special device. So you can't use uh, for this scanner because there is no space for queen. But in fact, most of the wing images I get with a special device where there is like a camera and a source of light. And there is like, a, I make it bigger slit, put a wing and put it down. So with special device and with anesthetized queens, you can measure the wings. But again, it's uh, then more, the wing base would not be visible. So for venation, it's good. But for wing length, as defined by Rutner, it's not so good. But again, using those points, it would be enough to measure if the queen is big or not. But more for size, because for the subspecies, we don't have references. So uh, anyway, it's, uh, it's not useful to measure queens because there's nothing to compare. Unless a breeder, for example, would um, make his own reference sample. So if queen breeder collects like thousands or maybe hundreds, okay, or 60 queen, let's say. So using those reference, it can be used if it's similar or not. But most breeders, uh, in fact, they pay more attention to the like honey production and um, defensiveness and other traits. Um, here's an interesting one. Um, we've almost touched on it um, early on, but um, it's a different um, different slant. If a queen had mated with 10 drones from 10 different colonies, if you analysed hundreds of bees, would you expect to see 10 specific groupings relating to the drones? So I, I never measured, measured like 500, uh, but normally you, you don't see. So if you measure even hundreds of workers from one colony, you don't see groups. You see one big cloud. And this cloud is um, because of the error of the measurement and of the environmental, like food, temperature, everything else. So that's why the molecular methods like microsatellites, they are good for single B. Using single B, they know who is father, who is mother. But with morphometry, there's a problem because you have environmental effects, okay? So that's why even if you measure lots of bees from one colony, you don't see groups, you see one big cloud of points. But if you, again, if you know the patch lines from molecular methods, then using this information, probably it would be possible with some probably 80, 90% accuracy to separate the workers. Okay, well, I think we'll uh, call a halt there. There's still uh, plenty more questions, um, but we've gone over time. Thanks very much indeed, Adam, for your two um, um, exceptionally good uh, um, uh, lectures. Thank you very much to all the, um, uh, all the people who've listened. Um, thank you very much, and uh, we hope to see some of you in the new year. So thank you very much indeed, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Good night. Good night.